Hello, and welcome to Arcadia University's BI 327 Histology course. This is the second of the three-part series of lectures on cartilage, and in this lecture, we're going to focus in on the properties and characteristics of hyaline cartilage. If we take a look at hyaline cartilage, what we're going to see is going to be the traditional structure that is the major component of the fetal skeleton, um, and it's also going to be found within specific regions within the adult. Uh, it's an example, again, of a skeletal connective tissue. Uh, it's going to be capable of very rapid growth, uh, but it still has the protective rigid structure that we'd expect from a skeletal unit. And so we are going to see this within the fetal skeleton where we need to have the structure of the body, essentially the, the skeletal elements supporting the, the differentiation of the body, as well as the, the protective mechanisms, the skeleton protecting those uh, fetal organs, but being capable of very rapid growth uh, that we see during early fetal development. You can also find hyaline cartilage in the epiphyseal growth plates, uh, or essentially the epiphyseal plates, the, the tips of the long bones, where they're essentially looking at uh, the articulation site, the, the, uh, the location where two long bones come together, and move in relationship to one another within a joint cavity. So again, the, the basic location where we'll find hyaline cartilage within the adult are the articular cartilage at the end of the bones. There's some rib cartilages, uh, laryngeal cartilages. Uh, very common, we'll look at examples of this within the respiratory system, rings supporting the trachea, as well as irregular cartilage uh, clusters or plates uh, within the walls of bronchi. Now, if we take a look at this, again, the characteristics of hyaline cartilage is that they're going to be thin fibrils of type 2 collagen. Again, type 2 collagen, a finer collagen that we saw uh, with type 1 collagen in the more classic uh, connective tissues like the, the tendons, the ligaments, the, uh, the loose connective tissues uh, that we see kind of throughout the body. But we're going to see a specialized type 2 collagen a thinner, finer matrix uh, within the extracellular matrix within the hyaline cartilage. We take a look at the ground substance, again, the, the characteristics of a connective tissue. We've got the cells, the chondrocytes, we've got the fibers, in this case type 2 collagen, and we've got the ground substance. Now in hyaline cartilage, the ground substance is going to be the predominant tissue component. So we're going to have glycosaminoglycans, we're going to have proteoglycans, we're going to have glycoproteins, lots of fancy names or components of amino acids, proteins with lots of sugars. And so the presence of all of these sugars are essentially going to allow for lots of cross-linking, lots of interactions within them, and it's also going to draw in a lot of water into that region. So we're going to have a very hydrated tissue. Uh, we're going to look at the core proteins of the proteoglycans are essentially going to be linked together onto uh, very long chains of hyaluronic acid, uh, so that basically what we're going to see is that all of these things, the glycosaminoglycans, the proteoglycans, the glycoproteins, are going to be linked to the hyaluronic acid. The hyaluronic acid is going to be interacting with the type 2 collagen fibrils. So what we're going to have is a three-dimensional kind of meshwork where we're going to be drawing in all of these things. They're going to be interwoven with one another, forming a relatively uh, fine matrix but we're going to have lots and lots of sugar components. So we're going to draw water into it. We're going to make this a very hydrated tissue. And it's going to be the presence of all of this water that's going to give the hyaline cartilage its resiliency. So we've got the fibers for strength, but we've got water in there to essentially support the matrix, to almost like inflate the matrix, if you want to think about it that way. And it's going to be the presence of uh, the water in there that's going to give it hydrostatic properties, almost like a, almost like a little shock absorber within these tissues. If we take a look at the organization within the hyaline cartilage, again, focus in on the cells. The cells are going to be the chondrocytes. The cells are going to be within a structure called a lacuna, essentially a, a cavity, a space within the cartilage. And these cells are essentially going to fill up that space, and they're going to be responsible for the cartilage matrix around them. Now, if we take a look at this in a little bit finer detail, we're going to see that immediately outside of the lacuna, so basically closest to that cartilage cell, we're going to have a region referred to as the capsular matrix. So that extracellular matrix in a capsule or immediate region around the lacuna. This region tends to be more basophilic, 
than the surrounding areas. And if we were to use the periodic acid shift uh, stain, it's going to be PAS positive. And the reason for this is that it has a higher concentration of sulfated glycosaminoglycans and a lower concentration of that type 2 collagen. And so what you can think about this is that we've got the type 2 collagen that is forming this three-dimensional meshwork throughout the hyaline cartilage matrix. And these cells are going to be secreting these sulfated glycosaminoglycans and they're going to diffuse out, but they're going to become trapped closer to the matrix and be at a higher concentration closer to where they're being secreted. And so because of that, the capsular matrix is going to be deeper, more intensely basophilic, and they're going to be more PAS positive than going further out. Going further out, away from these chondrocytes, away from the lacunae, we're going to come up to the region referred to as the intercapsular matrix. The intercapsular matrix is going to be less basophilic because of the reason that we've got less of these sulfated glycosaminoglycans and more of the collagens, more of the, the pinkish staining of the type 2 collagen. So again, we can look at this and see slightly different staining characteristics associated with the matrix, uh, again, in relationship to how it's established and how it's maintained. We take a look at organization of the cells within the hyaline cartilage. Generally, what we're going to see are going to be isolated cells. So a single cartilage cell, a single chondrocyte, sitting within a space, sitting within a structure that's called the lacuna. Now, when we take a look at histological specimens, we can often see a gap between the cartilage cell itself and the cartilage matrix. So it's like it, it's sitting in the lacuna, but there's some space around it. And this is an artifact of the process of uh, fixing these tissues, um, going through the, the dehydration process, the fixing process, the, the embedding process, uh, cutting these tissues. Normally, in life, these cells are going to be pressed up against the cartilage matrix, but with cell death, with shrinkage, we can see them separating sometime. Now, most of the cells are going to be isolated, especially with a hyaline cartilage, but there are going to be some examples where we're going to have isogenous groups. Isogenous groups are where you have uh, mitosis occurring, so you can have two cells, four cells, eight cells, and, you know, kind of combinations in there, where you've got cells that are dividing, but they're still trapped, in essence, within that same uh, lacuna within that same structure. They haven't migrated out or they haven't produced, produced cartilage matrix between them. So again, characteristic of, of hyaline cartilage, lots of isolated cells, a few of these isogenous groups. Now if we take a look at growth of the cartilage, there are going to be two types of growth that can be occurring. The first type of growth is going to be interstitial cartilage growth, interstitial or growth from within in essence. Uh, what happens is, is that you've got chondrocytes within the cartilage matrix that have been involved with supporting and developing and, and establishing and maintaining the cartilage, but these cells divide. And so we go from a single uh, chondrocyte in a lacunae to an isogenous group. Now, what can happen then is that these cells, uh, these cells within an isogenous group, can start to grow apart from one another by basically forming cartilage matrix between the two cells. And by growing apart, they're going to push themselves away from one another by adding new cartilage in between them. And so this interstitial cartilage growth is going to be a characteristic where we see these isogenous groups. And we can start to see this within areas like the fetal skeleton, the epiphyseal plates, as well as the articular cartilages. Now it's also possible that we can have appositional cartilage growth. Appositional is growth from the outside. And so what we're going to see is that those cells within the perichondrium, that inner chondrogenic layer of the perichondrium that we talked about in the previous lecture, are going to differentiate from those cartilage stem cells, what are going to be referred to as chondroblasts in some books, uh, into chondrocytes. So they're going to respond to a signal, they're going to become differentiated, they're going to become cartilaginous cells, and they're going to start to essentially add cartilage from that inner surface of the perichondrium push the perichondrium back as we increase the diameter of the cartilage mass by adding to it a growth around the outside. And again, interstitial growth, growth from the inside, appositional growth, growth along that external surface. Now, if we take a look at hyaline cartilage, again, the characteristics is that you want to maintain this cartilage in regions where you need its properties. 
one of the common locations where we're going to see this is at joint cavities where cartilage is going to be found along the articular surfaces. And again, um, in this case, uh, it's important to recognize, and I don't think I've emphasized this at this point, or uh, previously to this point, is that at the articular regions where we have two bones coming together, we've got hyaline cartilage along the surface, we're not going to have a perichondrium present. This is going to be one of the few locations in the body where we essentially have a space that's not, not lined by an epithelium, it's not lined by this perichondrium. So we're going to have free hyaline cartilage along the surface. So we've got a nice, smooth articulation joint, articulation surface, so the bones can move in relationship to one another. If the bones become compressed a little bit, the two bones come together, they can squeeze the cartilage, they can squeeze some of the fluid out of them, uh, but then you remove the pressure and you can draw the water back in. So you've got a good functional joint space. Now, normally, um, we're going to maintain a solid, um, not solid, a, a strong region of cartilage at the tips of these bones. But if these chondrocytes start to hypertrophy, they get larger, they start to die, this is a process that occurs normally, um, but hopefully we're going to be able to continue to produce new, viable, rich cartilage uh, to repair the, the regions that have been associated with cell death. But this process is going to start to accelerate with aging, and so we get more death and less production of new cartilage cells. And so what this does is essentially erodes away at the cartilage along these articular sites. And so if we take a look at the, the image on the right is the essentially a joint cavity. We essentially have bones to the top and to the bottom and that bluish staining is going to be the cartilage. That is a nice region of articular cartilage so that the, the bones are going to be moving relatively easily uh, with one another, smoothly moving in relationship to one another to allow for a little bit of compression uh, and then rebound. The image on the left is showing what happens when cartilage degenerates. Instead of a nice thick region of cartilage, we've got a much thinner region and it's actually absent in some areas. And so we've got the, the situation then that instead of cartilage along the surface, we're going to have bone. And bone is going to be a much more rigid structure. We'll talk about this in the next le le lecture. But bone on bone doesn't compress. Okay, bone on bone is going to break something. Uh, it's not going to move smoothly in relationship to one another. And so if we start to lose this hyaline cartilage, we're going to start to lose the properties associated with it, and we're going to start to have uh, problems uh, with the actual function within this region. Now that's the end of our discussion of hyaline cartilage. Um, the next lecture, we're going to talk about two additional types of cartilage. We're going to talk about elastic cartilage and um, fibrocartilage. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hoffmanj at arcadia.edu. Thank you.